My name is Samwen. Before I start, thank you, Helendia, and really appreciate for inviting me to share my C experience today. I started my C career in 20, my 20s as a cadet and worked my way up the hierarchy to eventually take command as a captain. I spent 20 odd years at sea before I stepped ashore in 2007 and took up a position as a quality manager and eventually Asia manager with the same company, they present. In my position as an Asia manager, I'm tasked to take care of approximately 600 over crew on board and ashore spread across 21 vessel. In my crewing department, we manage the different nationality ranging from European, Filipinos, Myanmar, and Singaporeans. We track all our crew ashore on board. They are sign on, sign off, including their welfare and training, their safety, health, and that, that of their immediate family members. Moving on, I will now share an even full experience why, why in command. This is an event all of us seafarers would pray and hope we do not encounter. I did and would personally like to forget and put this even behind me and move on in life. The impact is huge and many with the same experience find it difficult to get over with and have resulted in career shift for some. The event occur on both pure car carrier vessel and route to Greek for cargo operation. During coasting, fire broke off due to leak of fuel pipe in the engine room and quickly spread upwards the engine casing with the intense heat. The fire very quickly spread up the engine casing, causing the surrounding buckets to warp. The fire was largely contained within the engine casing up to final deck. The fire unfortunately started just as all engine crew left for their lunch break with only one remaining duty engineer in the engine room. Ship's firefighting system was activated, but unable to contain the fire. As vessel was in international water with no access to immediate shore system, I reluctantly made the decision to abandon ship. A decision no seafarer hoped to make in their sea carrier. The safety of my crew is of utmost importance. And it is this thought and priority that helped me make the decision. We were evacuated by helicopter to the nearest port Pierce, being the last to be airlifted. This thought and vivid memory of looking down at a blessing should be stay embedded in my mind till today. Once ashore, being continuously questioned by a Greek Coast Guard officer, they lay into the night and into the wee hours of morning was an, another other unforgettable event. There was no casualty, no pollution. However, three of us were kept in custody for three days and we were accused of abandoning ship. We continue facing these charges in court, which was eventually dropped as a time of incident the vessel was in international water. Crew member reacted differently during and after the event. Some were panicking while others managed to remain calm. The vessel was towed to a shipyard in Pieras, eventually restored to her former glory of four difficult, after four difficult months with our show technical team in charge. During the repair period on board, we recall share many difficult moments and thoughts of how it happened, how we could have done better, and what would have happened if the weather element was not in our favor, the eventuality could have been so different. Being together with the crew afterwards, there were many investigation and interview. Afterwards, there was time to be together, to chat together and discuss reaction and support one another. Being together after such a traumatic incident have ensured our well-being as a team. 
looking back, we realize that being together, giving help and moral support to each other is a very powerful healing process. I was in tears when the crew thanked me for saving their lives. It was, however, not an easy decision. And the good camaraderie we had on board prior to the incident helped. We work as a team, play as a team, and no doubt live as a team. The owner and ship management team are very caring, and strong management team were on site to give more support to the detained and those mentally recovering in the hotel. Arrangement was also made to send the crew for sightseeing to accelerate the healing process in this difficult time. However, it added to the burden of the event that following the incident, we had to return to COPE regularly to be questioned prior to the judgment. It was disappointing that we had to face such consequences, even though the decision made to leave abandoned ship saved the lives of many of our crew members. It was a stressful period as simultaneously there was ongoing gossip and misinformation circulating. I did not regret making the decision of abandoning the ship and evacuating the crew as I personally feel that safety and well-being of the crew is more important. I had to make a critical decision of choosing of choosing the 24 lives of crew or over common share value of the ship. The salvage team involved pressure rising. I will now be talking about my key takeaways from the event and how it has influenced my work currently. I have felt firsthand what it's like to be in a critical situation where the lives of all on board are at risk and my next decision is crucial. I started work at show 2007 after 18 years at sea and initially became a quality manager, auditor and then Asia manager. My role is now focused mainly on the human element. I understand that being at sea, risks are higher, and such is the life of a seafarer. It is important to monitor with each other and adjust our action accordingly with proper risk assessment and a contingency plan. We just need to care for each other while as a team, swim or sink together. In Wallenius Marine, we crew webbing is one of our important elements. During the COVID-19 pandemic, we have been proactive in our support for crew. We arranged regular conference call with the crew. We feel that only sending email was not enough. And it does not show that we as a company really care for our crew and the stress they are in, especially during the pandemic. Our CEO and senior management team are involved in each conference call with each ship. We listen as question and clarifying any need or worry they may have on board, solve problems where we can, assist in providing specific medication individual may require or insufficient. We need to understand their problem, help them to solve where possible. From there, acquire new experience for future references. I also strongly believe in maritime resource management training that there is a strong correlation between the attitude and behavior of the seafarers on board, the ship, and the culture that these seafarers belong to, national, professional, and organizational culture. Lastly, if I may share that during an emergency, respond to incident at sea with regards to the welfare of those on board. From my experience, taking this fire incident as an example, no matter how long you are at sea, not everyone can adjust and ready for an emergency. I feel the emergency preparedness is an important factor. All crew should be trained and should know what to do in the case of this event to minimize casualty and injuries. Our companies train everyone with race and preparedness program to emphasize the importance of safety on board and their individual responsibility. By preparing ahead, crew on board will not add 
hastily and make mistake out of urgency. During emergency preparedness, it is also very important to involve the office staff to have better understanding of each other. Moving forward, I believe that companies can prepare ahead of emergency by implementing protocol and training their employee to deal with such crisis effectively. Additionally, companies should prioritize the emotional welfare of the individuals. Thank you for your listening.